Good morning, modern steaders. I figured while it's still dark out this morning, we'd go run more diesel fuel for the excavator. It's almost on empty. We got 12 gallons of diesel fuel. <laughs> yep, it's starting to rain out. I want to get the excavator fueled up so that way when we need it, it's already got it in it. Yesterday, what you didn't see, did a bunch of work and Used all the fuel up. That's six gallons down. Ah, uh, we got another six, but I think it'll only take half of this, is my guess. I'm trying to go slow so I don't overfill it. Sounds to me like we're getting there. Yep. We're full. Look at that. I like it. Didn't even make that much of a mess. fueled up and ready to go for next time. I think the 
pigs are in food comatose from eating breakfast this morning. Hey pigs, come on, wake up. I got something for you. Want a treat? Come on. I got a treat. I think you'll like it. Come on. Let's go. You ready? You come in there, Lynx. You girls want a pumpkin? Is that good? Watch out, Andy. These are the pumpkins that grew in the compost pile. They're loving the seeds. The cool thing about this is pumpkin seeds are a natural dewormer. I'm looking forward to getting in here with the excavator and pulling out all the little stumps. Get more over there and getting this area, moving some rocks and getting this area smoothed out, seeded, and then we can mow in here. I'll put different animals in here next year and there'll be better grass for them to eat. Is that good? You got it all the way up to your eye. Goats are still searching for apples, finding them here and there. Gina and Olivia took Figaro to the vet this morning. He doesn't do good in a cat carrier and he doesn't do good at the vets. So I bet you they're gonna have a story or two when they get back. Yeah, over here filled up pretty good. This area is pretty wet. Haven't shown the chicks yet. All the chicks are doing great. It's nice and warm in here. Got a friend coming over any minute now. What are you guys up to, huh? We have our buddy Morgan from Goldshaw Farm. He's got a YouTube channel if you want to check him out. I'll put a link here in the description down below. But he came over today and we're going to be planting American Chinese cross chestnuts. Right here, yeah. Light resistant. Hybrids. Hybrid. And then we got some butternuts. Butternuts. Yeah. And then we're planting six trees now and in a little bit we're going to be planting an elderberry bush, right? Yeah. So we're going to do the too. chestnuts first. Chestnuts first. And then we'll do the butternuts down butternuts there. Yeah. There. So, so this is what's known as a bare root tree. So, um, you know, what you do is you wait till the tree goes dormant and the leaves yep. start to die off for the year, and that means the whole tree's kind of shut itself down. When they're like one or two year old seedlings, you can just kind of dig them up and pull them out of the ground without harming them. And so it's the perfect time to replant, like when you get into like late October, or November, because everybody's shut down for the year. So you could go out in the woods if you want to get like oak trees or anything right now. 
while everything shut down. Get Oaks, maples, trees. all of them. You can just, yeah, with a shovel and like a five gallon bucket. But if you did it in the summertime, the forest, they would die. They would kill them. So yeah. this is the time of the year. It's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> We might need a little extra dirt. Yeah, we'll probably have to get some dirt or wood chips maybe. After. Yeah, oh, you'll definitely want to mulch them with some, some wood chips for sure. What happens when you take out all the rocks? I know, there's, there's a lot of surface area that got <laughs> gone here. Kind of elderberry. Oh, so th these are known as the jumbo el elderberry the variety. It's uh, you know, I'm not. Sh I'm sure that's not the scientific name, yep. but essentially, big, healthy berry. Good. They come in clusters. Okay. It's pretty prodigious. It grows really, really. Quickly. How big do they get? Um, I mean, if you leave it unchecked and unpruned, it can get about yay high as this sh uh, shovel. Yep. Um, and uh. Like a, they like get a, a good, like good, a good size. size. But uh, what's nice is you can prune these guys and uh, use the cuttings to sprout more, more plants. Me and Morgan just got done planting the jumbo elderberry. I'm so looking forward to that. I can't wait in a couple of years we can take cuttings from that. We'll just have like a little elderberry orchard over here. We won't have to buy them anymore. We'll just we'll have a ton of elderberry syrup all winter long. So thank you for that. Happy to help, man. I want to introduce everybody. This is Morgan from Goldshaw Farm. He's over just, what are you, like 20 minutes away in Vermont? Yep, not just that, about, yeah. Not that far away. He's got a great YouTube channel. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your channel and Sure, so I'm, I'm in the process of trying to start a small farm uh, in Vermont. Yep. And uh, it's a mixture of, we have a 600 tree permaculture orchard as well as a whole bunch of ducks. And so what I've been doing is khaki trying- Khaki Campbells, right? Khaki Campbell ducks, awesome. so they're egg they're layers. Duck. And uh, what I'm trying to do is, is basically start my farm and yep. learn at the same time because I'm a guy who's got no background in farming whatsoever. I've, just wanted to do this and had a passion for it. So I've been trying to build things up from the ground. You got sick of the city life. Where were you living? I was living in Washington, D.C. and I just couldn't take it anymore. So I wanted to get up here, up north, back to New England and in Vermont. I don't blame you. How yeah. big of a farm did you buy? So it's about a 150 acre farm. Right. So it's good size, an old dairy farm. It's got this giant barn that's falling apart with uh, a lot of projects. Plenty to keep you busy. Exactly. That's exactly. a good thing. Yeah. Oh, and thank you, Morgan, yeah. for coming over. I'm Thanks looking forward for elderberries and the buttercup and the chestnuts. Yeah. The pigs will love those. They will. Uh, I think your family will too. Oh, yeah. Really good eating. The deer. Everybody will <laughs> Everybody. Love them. Yeah. Everybody loves chestnuts. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Cool, man. Thanks. So today we want to make pickled beets. So I want to cook up our beets. We can get them peeled and then we'll make our brine solution to pickle them in. Smells like beets. I cooked the beets a little bit so this way we can peel the skin. I just take the fork and just lightly scrape it. The reason I'm wearing rubber gloves is I don't want my hands dyed red. Now I want to make the brine. Add in our sugar, 
takes quite a bit of sugar, believe it or not. mustard seeds, some whole allspice, and some whole cloves. And some cinnamon sticks. Get this ready for the hot water bath. So we got our brine simmering. And we get our jars ready to pack. Oh, that smells so good. And thanks to Ann for all the beef. Yes, thank you, Ann. Ah, uh, that is allspice. to go. This will be over the jar? It will be. Make sure you use that pot. What's that? That one? Well that would have been one layer. It would have been. the pigs are gonna think about this. It smells good. Hey piggers! I like sleeping on that end for some reason. Oh that's right, I didn't show you guys what I did over here yesterday. What are you doing? Oh you like it over here because it's full sun, huh? Mmm. You don't like beets? They're good for you. There you go, Lynx. What, you don't want me putting you on video? You're sitting around doing nothing? Right. What? No breaks, get We're back playing. to work. Good excuse. We're kind of sunning ourselves. It is sunny out. Well, inside, yeah. There's nothing wrong with taking a break. Here, open the window.
All right, ladies, you ready? Yeah. Shut this off. Don't touch anything metal at all. You want to go in from the top. There you go. Yep. Don't let go. Don't let go. We'll put it on the towel. Uh -oh. Okay, you do it. Good job. Looks like you have a witch's room. Right. A what? How many do we get? Count them. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thanks. We're supposed to get a frost tonight, so I don't want to leave these outside. Ooh, that's still pretty hot. I'm gonna bring them in the house. It's been about an hour. I can't believe how warm they still are. Well guys, what a weird day weather-wise. It went from being windy and warm, to rainy, to warm, to windy, to like 60s this afternoon. Now in the 30s. Man, can't win. But we had a great day today, did a whole bunch of stuff. I wanted to thank Morgan from Goldshaw Farm coming over. I'm gonna put a link in the description down below to his channel. He's got a great YouTube channel. Him and his wife are building their farm life over there in Vermont, not too far from here. I'm excited. We got some chestnuts planted, some butternuts planted, and a nice elderberry bush. So, and then we got our beets pickled, and I wanted to thank our friend Ann for giving us the beets. And got about, what, 20 pints, I believe, of pickled beets sitting on our table. Going to be sitting for about a week to two weeks before we get into them and see how they taste, but I'm looking forward to it. So I wanted to thank you guys for coming along on our journey with us, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, the guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.